Chapter 15 of Kabumpo in Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Wooly B. Kabumpo in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. Chapter 15 The Sandman Takes a Hand. Someone was coming toward the palace, a little gray-cloaked old gentleman, a surprisingly quick and nimble old gentleman, springing from cloud to cloud and pausing now and then to straighten a huge sack he carried over his left shoulder. He was so busy admiring the lovely sky colors behind him and waving merrily at the fluffy cloud figures above his head that he did not see Ozma's shining palace until he was almost upon it. Stars, murmured the little old gentleman, balancing perilously on the very edge of a silver cloud. Another air castle, how delightful. I shall jump right through it. Gathering himself together, he leaped straight toward the window, out of which Dorothy and Ozma and the others were looking. With a soft thud, he struck the emerald setting just above the window, and down tumbled his sack, opening as it fell, and filling the air with clouds of silver sand. Down tumbled the little old gentleman, turning over and over, and finally landing on a blankety white cloud far below. All of this Dorothy saw, and was about to ask Ozma what it could mean when an overpowering drowsiness stole over her. Before she could speak, her eyes closed, and she sank backward into a big armchair, Trot and Betsy Bobbin, with two little sighs, crumpled down to the floor. The head of Sir Hocus dropped heavily on the sill, and not even in pokes had he snored so lustily. Ozma slipped gently down beside Betsy and Trot, and in a moment there was not a person awake in that whole big palace. Even the little mice in the kitchen were fast asleep with their heads on their paws. Did I say everyone? Well, not quite everyone had fallen under the strange spell. Tick-tock, Scraps, and the Scarecrow, who had never slept in their lives, were still wide awake and regarding their companions with astonishment and alarm. The tin woodman was taking things calmly, oiling up his joints and polishing his tin jacket with silver polish. There is no time to sleep, cried the scarecrow, shaking Sir Hocus. I say, wake up! But all their efforts to arouse their companions were in vain. Enchantment, said the copper man. Some, with a click and a whirr, Tick-Tock's machinery ran down, and as Scraps and the scarecrow were too upset to think of winding him, he stood as silent and dumb as the rest. What shall we do? cried the scarecrow, seizing Scraps' arm. Jump out of the window and go for help, or stay here and guard the palace. Scraps looked out of the window. Stay here, shuddered the patchwork girl, drawing in her head quickly. Then, said the scarecrow, let us arm ourselves and prepare to withstand any attack. He snatched up a pair of fire tongs, and Scraps grasped the poker. Falling into step, the two marched from the top to the bottom of the palace. Everywhere the same sight met their gaze. Rooms turned topsy-turvy, and spread over floors and sofas and chairs the sleeping figures of Ozma's once lively courtiers and servants. The effect was so distressing that Scraps and Scarecrow found themselves whispering and treading about on tiptoe. After inspecting the whole palace, they returned to Dorothy's room and placed themselves disconsolately in the doorway. Anyway, Ruggedo is quiet, sighed the Scarecrow, and that is something. Scraps started to make a verse, but the silence and ghost-like atmosphere of the sleeping palace had dashed even the spirits of the patchwork girl, and she subsided with an indistinct mumble. Ruggedo was silent for a very good reason. Ruggedo was asleep, too, asleep sitting up as stiff as a stone image for even in his sleep he dreamed of the dreaded bombardment of eggs. All this had happened because the little man in gray had taken Ozma's palace for an air castle, and who could blame him for that? Even the sand man would not expect to find a regular palace set among the clouds. There are plenty of dream castles, to be sure, and one of the sand man's chief delights is to jump through them and admire their lovely furniture. 
but sure enough castles the little fellow could not get over it sitting cross-legged on the white cloud which floated close to ruggedo's head he stared and stared well i never chuckled the sand man and turned a somersault for very amazement then not knowing what else to do or think he sensibly decided to hurry home and tell the whole affair to his wife his empty bag he found on a tall treetop and without one backward glance he bounded into the air and disappeared really it was quite lucky the little old gentleman spilled his bag of sand where he did for the only safe giant is a sleeping giant and while ozma and her friends lay dreaming they could not worry will they sleep forever sighed scraps after she and the scarecrow had sat silently for an hour seems likely said the scarecrow gloomily but even if they do he plucked three straws from his chest we shall stick to our post to the very end the scarecrow regarded the sleeping figures of the little girls affectionately to the end of forever gulped scraps putting her cotton finger into her mouth how long is that that said the scarecrow resignedly and settling himself comfortably that is what we shall soon see end of chapter fifteen the sandman takes a hand